serve Toastmasters at nearly every level of the organization, from area governor to district governor to the board of directors in 2008 to 2010, developing the 2010 strategic plan as well as the 2012 Distinguished Area, Division, and District Programs. He has spoken to Toastmaster audiences from coast to coast and has mentored District 65 in New York State and members around the world. Please help me, help me welcome Distinguished Toastmaster Mike Rafferty to tell us about the Revitalized Education Program. Wow, this is a lectern. <laughs> you, you could, this is a boat. All right. Who wants to know all the details about the Revitalized Education Program? Well, I'm sorry to tell you, you're going to have to wait a while longer. <laughs> My talk is going to be very brief and now offer to try to answer some questions that you might have. The Revitalized Education Program is an attempt to rebuild the education system that we have in place today in the manuals. Now the basics won't change. We'll still have clubs and districts. We'll still have manual speeches and evaluations and table topics. Club officers, the DCP, recognition systems, all of those are not changing except the DCP as necessary to accommodate this. But the manuals you use today, the Competent Communicator <coughs> Manual, the Advanced Communicator Manuals, the Competent Leader Manual, the ALS Award, will all be replaced. When I hear gasps, you have several years before you have to worry about that. Years. Reformation will be done before that happens. <laughs> this reformation, anyway. So, the basics are the DTM award stays in place, but the things to do it will change. The Distinguished Toastmaster Award. There won't be a CC, there won't be a CL, there won't be an AL, there won't be any, any of those type awards as we know them today. They will be new. They have not yet told us what the titles are, but there will be several tracks you go through that are selected based upon a self-assessment. So it's a self-directed interest throughout the program, not just when you get to the advanced manuals. There's very little more to tell about it beyond that, except for the timing. Right now, they are beta testing the program in a few clubs worldwide that are sworn to secrecy. <laughs> so there's nothing to tell there. Around next summer, they expect to have two or three districts selected from around the world start using the program. And then, they'll bring in a few more districts. It's going to be a very phased rollout over the course of a year or two. I don't know when District 30 will get there. It might be one of the first, it might be one of the last. The new district might get there before this, before 30. We don't know. It's coming. That's about all you can take back to your clubs at this point, is there's changes to the education program coming. Anything that involves a CC or a CL or an AC is going to be very different in a few years. Now the good news is, they have guaranteed a minimum of a two-year overlap between the old program and the new. Everything you're doing today will be still available for at least two years after they introduce the new program, the REP, in this district. So you've got plenty of time to get through the manuals you bought and you're working on. At the soonest, we might see it here next summer. At the latest, it might be another year after that. And from that date, there's two more years to use the old program before they'll stop recognizing and registering the CC and CL awards that we know today. At that point, after a two-year overlap, then you'll have to start using the new program. And I think you're going to like the new program when you see it. It is going to be much more modern much more current. For example, everything will be available online. You will not have to order manuals from TI and wait for them to get mailed to you. 
But you don't have to do it online either. If you prefer paper manuals, you'll still be able to get those. You'll have a choice, paper or plastic. I mean, uh... <laughs> but, it's a, it, but it's about member choice and serving the members, of course. All right, at this point, I will try to answer some questions that you might have. I might have to say I don't know or it's being determined, but I'd like to try and see if I can address whatever questions or concerns you might have about the RAP at this time. Who's first? Yes. Speak up and speak loudly. Great question, and the reason I didn't mention it is because it, is not, it does not interact with the REP. And let me explain the status of virtual clubs at this point. The Revitalized Education Program, the new manuals, that's the REP, Revitalized Education Program. Virtual clubs is something that has been brewing for some time. Immediately, as of August, two months ago, clubs can today have people officially participate remotely as long as a majority of the members is face-to-face -face and in-person in the same room. So if you've got 20 members in a room, you can have several people dialing in by Skype or whatever process you want to participate. And that can be full participation, giving speeches, evaluations, whatever works for you. But the majority of the meeting members must be face-to-face -face in person. You can't yet have an all-virtual club. The all-virtual club is phase two and that will be coming next year. They have to work out a lot of details on how it's going to work because there are some things that simply don't apply to a virtual club. For example, how do you do club officer training? How do you deal with the requirement for an area governor, area director, for an ALS? And the current impression, I don't know if it's official or just an impression I get, is all virtual clubs will be on-districted. Now what does on-district mean? That means they're not a member of any district. There's about 170 clubs out of 13,000 worldwide that are on-districted. They're not in any district. They're in District U, as they call it. They have no district to support them. That means there's no club officer training. Their DCP goals are one easier. You get to distinguish at four instead of five. You get the presidents at eight instead of nine. And members of an on-districted club can earn an ALS award without having been an area director or district leader. So it's a little different in an undistributed club. Most of the undistributed clubs are in places like Argentina, Pacific Islands, Mongolia, places where there's only one or two clubs in the whole country. So virtual clubs are coming independently of the REP and probably much sooner, absolutely much sooner than the REP. And we have a prize. Pat's handing out uh, a book. Let me, let me have one copy to show people. One hundred and one artistic Toastmasters around the world with Armando Cristofori. He is a dynamic and very enthused Toastmaster in... I forget where he's from, sorry. I think it's Australia. He put this book together at his own expense. And I think T.I. is selling it. It's a little bit like that part of a Toastmaster book, if you've seen that. Anyway, he shipped me a case of these to give away at the conference today. So, if you ask a question, you get a prize. Now I know there's more questions after that. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Hi Mike, this is Phil Coolidge, your 23 director. Could you talk to us about who is developing the content for the new educational? Was that done in-house? Did we work with firms where this is in their wheelhouse, et cetera? Very good. Yes, there is a consultant, a contractor, an education specialty company that is developing the program and working with World <coughs> Headquarters to do this, where we have education professionals on staff as well. There's also these people called Learning Masters who are ordinary members that are involved in the direction of that REP development. They're also sworn to secrecy. There's about 50 of them worldwide, these learning masters, and the learning masters were drawn from people who are new members all the way up to senior and experienced members, but it was intended to be a very broad, diverse representation of the membership in the learning masters. So it's being driven by World Headquarters, 
education consultants who are experts in the field that are doing this, a lot of it's going to be online, not even something you can easily replicate on paper as well. Like the self-assessment test works a lot better if you do it online versus the paper version. So it's in progress. All right, and you got a book? Yes. All right. And I heard someone over here. Yes? Virtual clubs is intriguing. Uh, might that lead to virtual contests and so on? Those are details yet to be worked out. I am of the impression that probably there won't be contests in a formal way for virtual clubs, but those are all details yet to be worked out. The virtual clubs are not yet here, but they are promised sometime towards the middle of next year. Uh -huh. Hear me? Okay. <laughs> Sir, the program will be designed based on a question and survey, question answered by survey. So, can, do you have a, a sense of the type of courses to be developed? I don't. Uh, they were in a presentation that was provided last spring at the spring conference, I believe, by Joan Moore, and I do not have it with me today because it hasn't changed. TI has not sent out anything since last spring in terms of an update on the REP, but there's various tracks that focus on particular aspects, uh, a little similar to the advanced manuals today, but that, that's yet to be figured out in detail and, and announced. And next. Is the phasing in seen as uh, test marketing and fine tuning before jumping in with both feet, or is that just for convenience? It is both, I would say. It's a matter of scaling up that virtual environment, the online resources to make it work, but it's also a matter of beta testing too and fine tuning it, figuring out what works, especially in the diverse cultures involved in Toastmasters. What works in Chicago might not work in Ulan Bator quite as well. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Hal Calloway, Area 12 Director. I agree it's an intriguing concept. If you can test into, in other words, if you if you decide where you ramp into the program based on self-assessment, does that mean that people can kind of test into some of the early designations? Can you, by nature of a test, get the equivalent of a CEC award if you... If a nice try, but I'm pretty sure that's not in the program. <laughs> <laughs> the thing about Toastmasters is it's about self-improvement. There are people who come into your club at what, at, if we look at a scale of 1 to 10, they're at a scale of one. It's all they can do to get up here and, and speak for two minutes with their icebreaker. And they'll work their way through a CC manual and they got up to like a, a four on a scale of one to ten. There are other people who are polished speakers already enjoying Toastmasters to get better. They might come in at a scale of what we call a six from one to ten and they get better to an eight or nine. So whatever level you're at, it will improve you. There is no minimum threshold or testing involved in Toastmasters. There's no failure in Toastmasters. The reason for the question is, is just you have DTM and then is everything else just a strictly relevant scale? Or is it because the danger is that you don't have a standard that, so if somebody says they are X designation, there's no way of really knowing what that means. Correct. That's there, a, any designation in Toastmasters does not guarantee a skill level. It simply means, it doesn't. I mean, let's be honest. There, there, are, there, are, there, there are DTMs that are significantly different from other DTMs. All right, I think I'm running out of time. I have a couple more. All right, another question over here. Anthony Trillo, uh, President of Talk Lincoln Shire. Someone told me that there was like an interview process that all new members do before they start their new revitalized program. That would be a self-assessment test I think that it's referring to. Where a member joins and they'll go online and they'll take a test that, it, it's not really a test, it's, a, it's an interest survey that figures out what they're interested in doing. Do they want to be a professional speaker? Then they'll go down this path. Do they want to give technical presentations? Then they might go down this path and that sort of thing. All right, one more question. The microphone guy is over there, so let's go with him. Whoever you want. <laughs> is virtual, okay, some things are, don't work so well in a virtual context. 
and this, see, Toastmasters seems to be one of them. And so is that something done virtually, with a virtual club, going to be treated exactly the same way as something done in person clubs? Are they going to have exactly the same designations, or what? I believe virtual clubs will operate the same way in terms of designations. There are some people who, it's not a given that virtual clubs are inferior to regular clubs, which I think is implied in your question. If that's not your implication, then, then I apologize. Okay. All right. I, I tend to agree with that, but there are other people who think that they are just as good, but different. And there is a different set of skills required to become a speaker on Skype or in uh, an, it's an online forum. How many books do we have left? Four left. All right. One, two, three, four. Give them out to them, and I thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mike. Okay. 1 p.m. right here, our keynote speaker, Mr. World Champion of Public Speaking, Craig Valentine, will be here to present Lead Your Legendary Life. Right here, 1 p.m. That is in 22 minutes, 1 p.m. Enjoy your lunch. <laughs>